axiom of choice. Why there is often a note whether this axiom is needed in a proof? Axiom of choice stipulates that, given an infinite collection of sets, we can select one element from each of these sets. It does not sound as a big deal, but the axiom implies that this is possible even if there is no choice function. Patton and Russell perhaps explain it the best. If you have an infinite collection of pairs of shoes, you can always select the left shoe. That is your choice function and you don't need to invoke the axiom of choice. But if you have a collection of pairs of socks, how am I supposed to select one? Of course, you can now go on selecting one sock from each pair you have in your wardrobe. Nevertheless, we talk here about an infinite number of pairs. A choice function is not available. If you wish to add socks to your infinite collection of left shoes, you need the axiom of choice. Okay, the axiom anyway seems pretty natural, and most mathematicians nowadays do really accept it. Added to the standard thermal of Frankel set theory axioms, it forms what we call ZFC, where Z and F refer to Zermelo and Frankel, and C to the axiom of choice. In finite collections we can make the choice anyway, given just thermal frankel axioms, so this axiom just extends this to infinite sets. On the other hand, this axiom really leads to some surprising results. First, it is actually completely equivalent to the well-ordering theorem. Every set can be well-ordered. This means that every subset of such a set has the smallest element. Like natural numbers. No matter which subset you take, there is the smallest element. Whoa, wait a moment. What is the smallest element of the set of real numbers? Or even worse, complex numbers don't even have ordering. I mean ordering that would preserve addition and multiplication in a sensible way. Are you telling me that we can somehow rearrange these sets in a way that, that each subset will have the smallest element? Yes. Don't ask me how. I'm not the one who said sock picking was easy. Jerry Bona joked that the axiom of choice is obviously true, while the well ordering principle is obviously false. It's a joke because they are equivalent. What bothers some mathematicians here is that with the axiom of choice we can claim that real numbers have well ordering, but none was constructed. In general, this is an acceptable course of action. We do it all the time in mathematics. Nevertheless, some made an effort to build mathematics in a constructive way, prominently using intuitionistic logic. Still, an effort was made to incorporate the axiom of choice so it does not violate the principles that constructivism find problematic, such as the exclude of the middle principle. Second surprising result is the Banachtarski paradox. Well, it's not a paradox but a theorem of ZFC. Nevertheless, the name shows that the result is surprising. It says that we can decompose a three-dimensional ball into five pieces and then assemble these pieces, but first applying some rotations, into two identical balls to the one we started with. This only sounds paradoxical if we associate these pieces with our usual understanding of volume or measure. Vsos made a video explaining the process, you can find the link in the description. So here is the answer why we need to specify if this axiom is needed in a proof. It is mathematically interesting to know. For many results, we don't need this axiom at all. For some results, we need to assume it. Tikhonov's theorem, perhaps the most important theorem of topology, saying that every product of compact topological spaces is compact, needs it. Once again, we talk here about infinite products, with product and not box topology. Every vector space has a basis is another example. Every connected graph has a spanning tree is yet another example. Again, we are not talking here about finite vector spaces, about finite graphs. We do not need the axiom of choice there. But really fascinating is that we can include the direct negation of the axiom of choice in the standard thermal of Frankel set theory axioms and see what results we get. There is a vector space with no basis. The generalized continuum hypothesis does not hold. There are cardinalities between the one of a set and its power set. 
And we can create a model of this set theory with the axiom of choice negated, where each set in Euclidean space is measurable, so the Banach-Tatsky paradox does not materialize. It is your choice whether you accept the axiom of choice.